Mary Agnes Maroney was born in Chicago, Illinois on May 9th of 1928, the first of two daughters to Michael and Catherine Maroney. The couple started their family just before the Great Depression hit. The family lived in poverty as Michael only made $15 per week passing out handbills. A relative of Catherine's wrote to a welfare agency and a paragraph on their plight was printed. The service did not normally disclose addresses, but through a slip, the family's address 5200 Wentworth Avenue was learned by a woman. On May 14th of 1930, Mary Agnes's mother answered a knock at her door and was greeted by a woman who claimed to have been sent by a social worker to deal with the Maroney's case. She was described as well-dressed, about 22 years of age, protruding teeth, and a cultured voice. The woman identified herself as Julia Otis. After Catherine disclosed the family's many problems, the woman asked if she could temporarily take Mary Agnes to California with her, adding that she will be unrecognizable and fat as a butterball. Catherine refused. After promising to return, the woman handed Catherine two dollars and left. The following day, the woman came back, this time with baby clothes, as Catherine was pregnant. The woman stated that she had arranged to get a better job for Catherine's husband, Michael, and offered to take Mary Agnes to a nearby store to buy her some clothes and shoes. Reluctantly, Catherine gave her consent. Later, she commented that Mary Agnes sobbed and refused to go with the woman, but was taken anyway. Mary Agnes and the unidentified woman never returned. Mary Agnes's parents reached out to the police and began to search for their missing daughter. The Maroney family received a letter from Julia Otis the day after she took Mary Agnes. It read, Please don't be alarmed. I have taken your little girl to California with me. I have hired a special nurse to take care for her. We'll be back in two months. By that time, you will be on your feet again and you will be able to care for her. She didn't even cry a bit. She is outfitted like a princess. In the meantime, I'll help all I can do to get you on your feet. Don't worry about her or anything else. When you get this letter, we'll be on our way already. As ever, Julia Otis. This was the last the Maronis ever heard from the woman who claimed to be quote unquote Julia Otis. Police scoured Chicago's railroad stations for any clue that Mary Agnes had been taken on a train. Two weeks after the kidnapping, a woman who identified herself as Alice Henderson sent the Maronis a letter in which she stated that Otis was her cousin and that she was love hungry because her own husband had a baby and passed away over the year before. Henderson never wrote again, and authorities state that the letter from Otis was written in the same handwriting as the one written by Henderson. Unfortunately, investigators were not able to find Mary Agnes or the woman who took her. Throughout the years, there were various sightings, but nothing that could be confirmed, and the case went cold. Stories about Mary Agnes would appear in the newspaper now and then, particularly when other children went missing. Her story eventually caught the attention of Chicago Daily News reporter Eden Wright, who noticed something about the Maroney family in a photo. All the members of the family resembled each other, the newspaper wrote. The Chicago Daily News convinced a California newspaper to print pictures of the Maroney family, hoping it would lead to Mary Agnes. The pictures were apparently spotted by a man who claimed one of Mary Agnes's sisters looked so much like his wife that it could have been her in the photograph. The woman is Mary McClelland, a 24-year-old housewife. In 1952, she came forward claiming that by looking at the photos of Mary Agnes's siblings, she suspected she was Mary, the missing girl. Six more siblings were born after Mary Agnes disappeared. Mary McClelland had been adopted within a year of the kidnapping by Charles and Nora Beck. Dr. Krauss, after studying and comparing her dental casts, named her as one of the family. Mary McClellan's skull and blood showed she was a Maroney, according to the doctor, and he said Catherine Maroney claimed to recognize her, which was not the case. On September 3rd of 1952, the Chicago Daily News ran the following words atop its front page, 22-year search for kidnapped baby ends. 
It claimed characteristics in McClellan's teeth helped identify her as Mary Agnes, and the newspaper arranged a meeting between McClelland and Catherine Maroney. Catherine said, She's a great lady, fantastic person. I wish she was my daughter, but no. An aging physician named Dr. E. W. Marathu stated that he delivered Mary McClelland to an unknown mother on November 17th of 1927, and that her mother provided a baby picture of her daughter dating from 1928, which proved she had been adopted two years before the kidnapping. Furthermore, Mary Agnes underwent an operation for a ruptured navel, but Mary McClelland did not have the scar Mary Agnes had at the time of her disappearance. Further DNA testing proved she was not Mary Agnes. She passed away in 2005. A DNA test performed in 2008, following Mary McClellan's passing, conclusively determined that she was not Mary Agnes. In February of 2023, it was announced that DNA testing had determined a link between Mary Agnes' surviving family and relatives of Jeanette Burchard a Florida resident who passed away in 2003 at the age of 75. Jeanette Burchard was raised as an only child, married twice, had three children, and spent more than 50 years as a nurse. Jeanette's family was told that she was born on April 14th of 1928, and that her biological father passed away two months after she was born, and that she spent the first six years of her life in Chicago. She was raised by Jeanette Solaric Darris Anderson and a stepfather, Frank Darris. The pair raised Jeanette as a devout Catholic. Jeanette married Edward Jennings. Decades later, she married again, that time to Earl Burchard. Both of her husbands have since passed away. Jeanette had three children, Terry Arnold, Barbara Joan Jennings, who passed away in 2006, and Edward Clifton Jennings Jr., who passed away in 2004. Jeanette's daughter, Terry Arnold of Florida, who is still alive, has suddenly found herself entangled in a historic Chicago cold case. Terry said she was contacted in September of 2022 by a Cook County detective who had questions about her late mother and asked if she would be willing to take a DNA test. At first, Terry thought it could not be right. Then she decided to take the DNA test just to prove the detective wrong. The results came back on October 28th of 2022 and revealed all was not as it seemed. Though the maternal side of Jeanette Burchard's family was Polish, Terry said her DNA results revealed she is not. She is mainly Irish. The Maronis are also Irish. Terry told the Chicago Sun-Times, that she's since learned my family is completely different from what I was always led to believe. And she said she's very confident her mother was Mary Agnes. Terry said her mother loved her pets, opera, and the Miami Dolphins. Her life apparently began in Chicago, but most importantly, she was the world's greatest mom. We adored my mother. A granddaughter of Jeanette Burchard, Lori Hart, acknowledged the pain that Mary Agnes's disappearance must have caused the Maronis. But she said that she's still blessed to have had Jeanette Burchard as her grandmother. Anytime I needed her, she was there, Lori Hart said. Mary Agnes's nephew, 55-year-old Don Maroney of Downstate Flanagan, is also convinced his aunt has been found. Don, Terry, and Lori believe Jeanette Burchard was Mary Agnes because of the work of Cook County Sheriff's Office Detective Jose Rodriguez. He was assigned in June of 2022 to investigate Mary Agnes's disappearance as part of Sheriff Tom Dart's Missing Persons Project. Jose Rodriguez and Commander Jason Moran said commercial DNA testing revealed the genetic association between Terry Arnold and members of Don Maroney's family suggested they were all cousins. That left Terry trying to make sense of a new family history, but it also offered closure to the Maroney family, which has been at the center of the case for 93 years. Mary Agnes's mother, Catherine, was haunted by the loss of her daughter and fell into a deep depression. Catherine passed away in 1962 at the age of 49. She was only 17 years old when Mary Agnes was kidnapped. Mary Agnes's father, Michael, passed away in 1957 when he was 58. 
His final words were said to be, They never found my baby girl. Don Maroney said the family had always hoped whatever happened to his aunt, that she led a good life and she was taken care of, and she was. Terry said that she had never before heard the name Julia Otis, and she doesn't know how her mother came to be raised by Terry's grandmother. All I know is she ended up with her, and I just feel bad that the parents never knew what happened to their daughter. Either way, the Maroney family can honestly truly know that she was very much loved. Terry also said that if her mother was still alive to learn the news, she's sure that she would have reached out to the Maronis. She would have gone to the family and said, I am here, I am fine.